Hey Diamond Painting friends, Jessica here with Tiny Worlds of Wonder. I hope you're having a fantastic day. I'm stopping in today to share our second to last Summer with the Masters video. I can't believe it. Time has flown by this summer so far. I hope you guys have had so much fun and you've gotten so much out of the series. I have to say, this is the most fun that I have had making videos for a long time. And I'm so pleased that so many of you have enjoyed coming along for the ride as we dive into some of the amazing artwork available to us under the umbrella of old masters or in the public domain. So snuggle in, we're gonna hang out a little today. I'm gonna tell you about some ways that you can get a little creative with your old masters pieces so that you can hopefully get even more out of your selections. Now next week, Katie will be back with the final video in the series and I'll be stopping in just for a little wrap up video on my side with our final giveaway drawing and maybe some viewer highlights which I think would be really fun. If you have not been able to catch all the videos in the series I will link the playlist that I've created up in the cards. It's got my videos and Katie's videos all easily accessible to you so be sure to check that out if you feel like sharing it with a friend that you think would enjoy doing some old masters diamond paintings that would be amazing as well. Katie and I have both put a ton of work into the series and I think we're both really proud of it and so we would love it if you would share it with someone you know who would enjoy it. Also, I'm not doing this alone. Be sure to check out Katie's channel over at Diamonds and Washi. Katie is the nicest person, you guys. Really, she's every bit as nice as she seems on her channel. And she makes amazing content, not just for Summer with the Masters, but on all kinds of topics. So I'll be sure to link her channel in the description. Head on over there and subscribe because she is awesome. Now, even though the educational portion of Summer with the Masters is coming to an end, the event itself is not coming to an end. We have several more months until August 14th when we're gonna host our wrap up and grand prize drawing announcement. So be sure to hang in there with us for the summer. You're gonna see my canvases again and maybe even some more canvases by the time it's over. We'll be working on our kits together all the way through the summer. It's gonna be great. You can sign up on the Google form in the description below Anytime before August 14th, you just need to have a canvas that you started after May 1st that features artwork from pre-1926. You can order it as a custom. It can be a pre-packaged kit. It can come from any vendor, and the artist can be any artist from anywhere as long as that artwork was created before 1926, which is the public domain cutoff in the United States. Be sure to see all the info on how to enter and how to participate in the description below. I'll make sure everything is there for you so you're in the loop and you know how to join us. We also have a number of awesome vendors supporting the event. So they've either provided discount codes or in some cases, some products for our giveaways. Huge thanks to them. All of these are small businesses and it's so fun to feature small businesses in an event like this. Today's project is the Church at Auvers by Van Gogh from Crafties. This is a diamond painting that Crafties sent me for review. Now I am a Crafties affiliate. I'll put all the information in the description below. I have to make sure I tell you that whenever I'm giving you any info from any company I partner with. This canvas did come a bit squashed up and I set it under my table cover to get it all flattened out. Then graduation came. Confetti, confetti, it was so much fun. We had tons of family here, but I did have to pack up all my diamond painting stuff. I shoved this back in the box, not very carefully and I kind of wrinkled it up again. So I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to do the table cover procedure again. But I will say the drills on this canvas are to die for. I think the rendering is turning out amazing. There is something that's so satisfying when you find a kit with really good square drills. And that is one of the hardest things to find. It's like the holy grail. My pen came from Lazy River Wood Turning. I've got some paddy wax sitting off Next to me, my cover minder is from Patty Wax as well. My storage containers were sent to me for review by a company called Artercraft on Amazon. I showed one of their 80 something grid boxes in my last video, I think it was. They sent me this one as well. I wanted to make sure I tested it out before I showed it to you today. So I've been working with it on this kit. 
So far, so good. The containers are all closing fine. As someone who's only worked with twist off lids, I'm finding these Tic Tac style containers really a lot easier to work with. So I might have to reconsider my storage system there. Artercraft did want me to let you know that this is only available until it's out of stock this time. Um, so if you're interested in some storage with a lot of colors, this has 62 containers, then head on over to Amazon. I'll put the link in the description below. It came with two little fun to help you get your drills in the tiny tops of these Tic Tac containers and then it came with enough labels for all the containers so of course I'll keep you posted on the quality as I work with it but so far it's working just as storage should which is functioning without muss or fuss in the background of my diamond painting experience so let's get into the video today I'm actually gonna jump over to my computer because we're gonna be talking about some ways that you can make the most of your old masters custom artwork so Let's do it. Okay guys, we're gonna have a little fun experimenting with some art here. Please forgive all the background noise, the birds and the traffic. My office is in the back of my house and it's a noisy spot. So let's say you found a piece of art that you would really love to diamond paint, but you drop it into Threadbare Designer to do a test render and you find that it has to be huge to look very good at all. Does that mean you're out of luck? Well, I don't think so. So I'm gonna show you today some options for doing a little editing and creative cropping that might help you use some of your favorite images in your diamond paintings. So first we're gonna experiment a little bit. I've got this piece in my folder called The Temptation of Sir Percival. This is by Arthur Hacker. I love this piece of art. I would love to diamond paint it. But you can see when I drop it in at a 58 by 44, it's really, really pixelated. We're just gonna drag this little um, slider bar over and see what it looks like. Here's a 60 by 80 roughly, still pretty pixelated. If we go up to 110 by 82, it starts to look pretty decent. The faces are pretty small on this, but I don't know that I want to do a 110 by 82 diamond painting. I'm gonna see what I can do with this image. Now, when you're working with some test renders in Threadbare Designer, I suggest that you set your colors somewhere between, whoops, mine's way up. Set your colors somewhere between 40 and 50 because that's where most diamond painting companies render their images. And then you can slide this size bar to kind of resize. You can go all the way up to just a ridiculously huge. I think for this piece of art as it is, I'm probably pretty satisfied with it around 100 by 125, something like that. I do wanna make sure I set my thread set to DMC 447 CXC because that's how many diamond painting drill shades there are. So that's gonna give you a much more accurate color sampling. Let's see what we can do with this image to maybe make it a little bit more feasible for diamond painting. So I'm just gonna go ahead and open my photo up just in my photo viewer here. This does have a lot of interesting background, but I don't know that all that background is really essential for what we're gonna be doing. So I'm gonna try cropping this image. Now, one thing you need to know before you crop your images is that you do want a large high resolution image if this is going to work. Um, if I can find something above 3000 pixels, for my high resolution images, I'm pretty excited. And then just take a test run in Threadbare and see how that works out. Sometimes you can get away with a lower resolution image than you think. All these today came from wikiart.org in their high resolution section. So one of the challenges about cropping these images is that artists are already great at composition. So we don't want to ruin that in the sense that we sort of mess with the placement of all the main elements. There's sort of a rule in design where we imagine a grid of nine squares going across our image, and some of the most important elements should come at the intersection of those squares. So in this case, I'm gonna see if I can get Percival's face to function in the intersection of one of those squares. And then I might see if I can get our temptress's face kind of in the other one so that we have a pleasing composition and we still get our main figures pretty much completely located where they should be. So let's try something like that. I'm gonna to try to make sure I have kind of an even amount of space here and then maybe an even amount of space above his head. 
And maybe I'll come in on the side just a little bit here. That way we get some symmetry going on. I don't know that we need our temptress's whole body here, but her face and her gaze are definitely central to what's going on. So I'm gonna save a copy. I'm gonna save that image in my art folder here and just call it cropped. That way I don't overwrite my larger image. Now let's see what happens when I drop this into Threadbare Designer. Let's see what size we can get away with now. So let's go down to more manageable size and see what happens. So now you can see a 77 by 65 looks pretty darn good actually. See how small we can get away with here. So there's a 75 by 88, 77 by 65. I'm I'm actually just fine with how that looks. As I zoom out a little bit, I'm just pinching my fingers into my touchpad here to do that. The faces look pretty clear. If I zoom in a little bit, I can see more of the pixel by pixel rendering on this. And by diamond painting standards, that looks really normal to me. So I might be able to get away with this cropped version in a much smaller size, as you can see. Now this does have a lot of muted colors. So one of my favorite tools for editing colors is actually a site called Pixlr X. This is a really easy to use software. And you can see I've been experimenting already with this image a little bit, just boosted up some of the colors just to make that a bit more vibrant. Sometimes what I do in this adjust and filter tab under color is just boost up the saturation a little bit. And then under light, I boost up the contrast a little bit. And I find that that sometimes can make these images that tend to be a bit muted come to life a little bit more. So let's experiment with this kind of version with the color sort of bumped up and see what happens there. So you can see now our colors are a little more lively and it really depends on what you like in your diamond painting. If you want that really muted kind of aged tone that happens to paint over time, then you can leave the image alone. If you like a little more vibrant skin tones, a little brighter reds and purples here, maybe you wanna bump up the contrast and the saturation just a little bit. So I have some other examples here to show you of art that works a little less well in its original form, but might work a bit better after some of these creative cropping techniques. This image is called The Birth of Venus by Bogero. Pardon the creative stars here. I don't want my video to get demonetized. And this one has quite a lot of nudity in it. But I thought it might be interesting to crop out this central figure because this, with all of this busy background, would have to be huge if I wanted to do this as a diamond painting. So what I did here is just crop out the central figure, like I said, left to right below her belly button, tried to make the placement of her face at the intersection of one of the nine grid squares that could go across my image when I edit it. I think this would be a really lovely diamond painting. Here's another example. This image is called Choosing by artist George Frederick Watts. This is a beautiful image and I think it would actually work just fine in a full-size diamond painting without cropping. But when we crop the image and we just sort of use this main area with some of the flowers, you can see that we can render this in a much smaller size and have a much more manageable diamond painting to work on. Here's an image that I would love to diamond paint. Of course, I had to have another waterhouse image in here. This is Lamia and the soldier. Lamia is a creature that turns into a snake and actually consumes men she meets along the path here. So a little less romantic story than actually looks to be depicted here. This image would have to be huge in its original form to diamond paint. When I crop out just the central figures here and kind of get these two gazing at each other, in that main portion of my grid. Then I can drop this into my software. And not only can I do it in a smaller size, but I also get a really interesting shape to my diamond painting, kind of a long, narrow rendering, which could be really interesting next to a door or in some other area of my house with a more vertical space. Now, sometimes you may just wanna crop an image to sort of update it a little bit and give it some more interest. So this is Salome by De La Boulay. I've showed this in one of my other videos, but check out the interesting thing that happens to the artwork when we just use a portion. All of a sudden the piece looks a little fresher and a little more updated, and it really draws the eye to the face of this beautiful figure. 
really draws the eye to this bright red dress as well. So there you have it guys. I encourage you to experiment with your images. See what you can do with some creative cropping. It might really, really change the ability to diamond paint some of these crazy huge pieces that are so much fun to work with, but just have to be an enormous size to work very well for diamond painting. Now before I sign off for today, of course I have to announce the giveaway winner for our Lazy River Wood Turning Lady Godiva pen. The prize will be a pen that's turned from the same blank as my beautiful pen here, just with a completely different turning design. Now if you remember, Matt over at Lazy River was kind enough to create a number of these pens based on Old Masters artwork, one for me to give away here and one for Katie to give away. And then there will be several more available in various ways. So be sure to follow Lazy River Wood Turning over on Instagram so you know exactly how to get your hands on one of those designs. Huge thanks to Matt for working with us and making that so much fun. So I am so excited to announce that the winner of the Lady Godiva Lazy River Wood Turning Pen is Lakeisha S. Lakeisha says, hi Jessica, so many wonderful artist works. I don't know how you were able to choose your favorites. It was really hard, Lakeisha. <laughs> I especially liked the Iranian artist whose work looks so authentic and not typical, and the Indian artist. The colors are so rich. I love diamond painting pens with any kind of fuchsia, bright pinks, magenta, royal purple, purple, yellows, pearly white, etc. Those colors just always seem to grab my attention. I hear you on that, Lakeisha, because pink. Pink is my jam as well. <laughs> Lakeisha, I'm so excited for you. I'm gonna get in touch with you through your comment and give you some instructions, and then your pen will come directly from Lazy River Wood Turning. Now, of course, this is not our last giveaway. We have our grand prize giveaway on August 14th, but I'm also gonna do another giveaway next week when I pop in for kind of our final farewell for our educational series. So the prize for next week is going to be a $25 gift card to any company that licenses all their canvases legally and offers a gift card. The winner will be able to choose your preference on that gift card. All I need you to do is leave a comment before June 18th, and I'd like you to tell me whether you prefer round drills or square drills in your diamond paintings. Of course, I'll have all the official rules below so you can check those out. Be sure to check out Katie's channel over at Diamonds and Washi. Make sure you check out our full playlist for Summer with the Masters, and of course, Make sure you keep posting your pictures over on Instagram with hashtag Summer with the Masters so that we can see what you're working on and be inspired. As always, if you have questions, drop them in the comments below. I'm happy to answer as many questions as I can. I hope you guys have a wonderful week. I'm really looking forward to being back from my short little break and hopefully getting some tutorials and whip and chat videos in the mix here really soon. Take care of yourselves as as always, spread some joy wherever you are, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.